right, we appear to be uh, ready on YouTube. So I'm going to give everybody a couple of minutes to filter in um, just because uh, we're still missing a couple of our featured readers. Um, so feel free to just hang out here for a little bit if you feel inclined to chat. Um, there's a text chat as well as the voice chat. I just yawned really loudly and that spooked my cat. Oh, that's adorable. <laughs> now she's yawning too, so. Big baby. <laughs> she's watching the phone. I don't know what it is, but she despises sounds coming from electronics. Like, um, what is it? There was this song that um, Theo played once and it's not a good song. Like, the, the person's clearly singing off-tune. And I think it was on purpose. And she, poor Peanut, just fills with rage. And she bites the phone. Oh, my God. <laughs> I've never seen such violence. This poor sweet cat is just trying <laughs> its best. I mean. <laughs> I know. Um, okay. I'm going to hop around and see kind of what the vibe looks like on YouTube. Yeah, we're we're all kind of gathered here as uh, readers, so I could probably go ahead and get started as people start to trickle in because the beginning is mostly just me talking about the press. Um, so hi, uh, my name is Nat Rom. Um, I use they them pronouns and I'm the founder and editor in chief of Fifth Wheel Press, um, aka the host of this launch party event. Um, so we're here today to mostly, um, like, I mean, the, 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 the title of the event is um, the launch party for Rachel Crosby's Trick Mirror Your Computer Screen, which comes out tomorrow. Um, we have got all of the books in hand, all of the goodies in hand. Everything is very beautiful, as Rachel can verify. Um, and we're really, really excited to get this out into the world. Um, but we're also really excited to welcome two of our other Laser Series authors whose books are going to be published in June, uh, Sal Kang and Yael Weitz. Um, they're going to be reading a little bit tonight as well. Um, so if you're unfamiliar with Fifth Wheel, new to us, um, we're a dedicated uh, queer literature and art publishing space. Um, we've basically in the last year kind of expanded into literature from sort of my previous pursuits in photography um, doing Fifth Wheel Press as a photo book press, and now we're also publishing chapbooks, anthologies, etc., cetera, um, for a queer audience um, of authors. Um, and so in that case, uh, let's go ahead and get started with the, um, with the event. Um, so I'll, I'll read just a couple to get us kind of going so nobody else has to go first. Um, and the first poem I'm going to read is forthcoming in uh, the Gamut Magazine's first issue, White. Um, I kind of submitted it at the last minute and I was really stoked because I love this one and I'm so glad that they also liked it. <laughs> Rachel pays the cat tax in chat. Um, <laughs> anyway, um, this is And Wander Midst Fog. And uh, content warnings for this piece are uh, mentions of suicidal ideation, uh, chronic pain, and gender dysphoria. Is it that I look out the window and fall in love with the fog because I want to become it, descending at will to wrap myself between bare swamp tree branches on the kind of afternoon that can only be a Sunday in January? between the concrete overpasses of the highway that cleaves through Midtown to the harbor and sits silent in the wee hours of a December Saturday morning? Is it that I long to separate into droplets and drift upward into rust and bronze and marigold cones of light to soften their edges, or to blanket forests in cool gray mist 13 miles from the city lights? Is it that I need to live somewhere between liquid and gas, to fill the volume, take the shape of anything that might contain me? Is it like the way I sleep curled inward just to make myself smaller? Like the way it's pushed me not to know a spine that doesn't crackle, a body no one leered at? Is it the impulse to flee the weight of both sorrow and soft tissue sutured to my chest? To evaporate as I please, to choose where I lay myself next, 
valley or lake or thicket or stretch of North Avenue just before daybreak? Is it that I fervently wish to dissolve into nameless specks of broom dotting pastoral paintings, to dwell where the stillness doesn't ask why I am not moving at the speed of sound? Um, so that is um, from my forthcoming full-length hybrid collection um, coming out this summer, um, which is still a little a little hush hush right now. But I'll 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 talk more about it when I know more about it. Um, and then the next poem that I wanted to read is um, kind of a classic of mine. I think I've actually read it at every single event that I've read at since I wrote it. Um, and this was published in Warning Lines Magazine's third issue, Fallen Cherub, um, this past, I think it came out in December. I, my sense of time is all wacky right now. But um, this is Bloody Mary. Um, and this poem, um, for content warnings, discusses uh, death and kind of just the overall setting of dissociation um, and sort of the idea of grief and dissociation kind of coming together hand in hand, which is really what the book is largely about. The prettiest churches are always for funerals. There is only what is right here, hardwood pews and hymns and leather books everyone knows but me. My feet still don't touch the ground. Reverberating choruses under brushed plaster canopies. For a few years, we prayed at snack time. Ghosts and silhouettes alike beckon me heavenward. After that, I see the world through concave stained glass window lenses. I can always laugh, but never cry. I still clear my throat 14 years later in fruitless efforts to release anything resembling the size of that sob. There are mirrors all around me. Charging the power in soliloquy, I summon at the scream of a name. Crack all eight knuckles in 60 seconds, vision tunneling to a pinhole. I am playing Red Rover in Sherwood Gardens with apparitions shaped like specters. With all my might knocking infallible tripwires, each shatters the further I fall. Suddenly all there is is sky. Right. Um, well, since we're doing an open mic and we also have an extra reader, I didn't want to read too much. Um, so I will gladly hand it over to whichever of our guest readers feels comfortable happening first. Um, so that'll be Yael or Sal. All right. Uh, guess I'll go. <laughs> Go ahead. Um, I'll, I'll give you a, like a little intro too. Um, so Yael's book Wilder Centuries is coming out at the beginning of June with Fifth Wheel. Thanks so much. Yep. And thanks for having me on. Um, yeah. So I will read from the forthcoming work Wilder Centuries. Um, this is a piece called Grief. Uh, yeah. Grief. She stole my voice, her gorgon head rattling in one collective hiss. I copied her phantom limbs, her ragged breath, her volcanic eyes erupting. She stole my voice, then she danced the tarantella on its ashes, pinned it flat and useless to her clothesline. She watched me stare, then plucked my eyes like grapes for feasting. She stole my voice, then left me on her cobblestones, furtive in the dark. Thanks. And I think, I suppose I'll just go on. Um... Selected. Um, a piece called Desert. We sought camp in total darkness. The sand will hold you, the stranger said. I knew, yet still my legs buckled. The stranger held my fear with expert hands. We skate the dunes arm in arm, this stranger in me. We lay on cold, soft sand. I picked up handfuls, let them slip. She taught me how to scatter dread, imbue the black sky with my wishes. The night has space for grief in the Sahara. Electric just won't do the trick. No man-made incandescence breaks us open. We wished for light as intimate as sand. The stranger's hands were my hands. My fears were hers. We whispered to the sand, begging, send me skyward, it said. And so we tossed. The stars were made. A little fear, a little stranger, and miles of silken sand. I suppose um, 
Should I do one more? Yeah, feel free or even like it totally depends on how much you want to read, but you could even do two more. We're doing pretty well on time. All right. Sounds good. Okay. Uh, we've got a piece called Shapeshifter. You show me your true form. I stumbled. My hiss a whistling kettle on your flame. I lurched, desperate for your dead wood. You turned it to smoke, gnarled limbs of self-protection, jewels in a coal stove. I armed myself, poker sword, river rocks, rainwater. I could not let you live. Fox chitters turned to yelps, then gasps. Creatures trampled in a mad dash out. I showed you my true form, you withered. Left me delirious, solitary, tasting my own blood. Yeah, uh... I think that'll be all for me, but thank you so much. And I'm so looking forward to uh, hearing from Rachel <laughs> and from Sal. Awesome. Thank you so much for reading. Thanks for joining us today. It was really awesome, by the way, to be able to have both of the June authors read today as well. Like, I was pretty excited about the way that worked out. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> great to be here. Hello, hello. I guess I'll take over from here. Um, yeah, so my name is Sal. I'm so excited to be here. So excited for Rachel's book. Um, yeah, I'll just read a couple of pieces from uh, Daddy Issues, which is also coming out in June. Sorry, I forgot to say that part. I was about to hop in and be like, right, by the way, Sal's book is also coming out in June and it's called Daddy Issues. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yes it is <laughs> that's what it's called and that's when it's coming out okay um all right uh i'll just give uh all the kind of content warnings for the reading at once i yeah yeah so i'll just give a couple warnings for uh, mentions of sex, allusions to kink and BDSM, uh, general violence. Um, yeah, I think I think those are all. All right. Okay, this first one is called Potassium to Water. Questions I ask my lover before we go to bed. Do you want to see a magic trick? Would you like to try swallowing me whole? Have you ever peeled open a tangerine? It's like that, only you keep going until there's nothing left but infernos, do you see? Can I ask you one more question? Will you still kiss me when I look different? Will you, will you, will you? How can I be sure? Why do I keep igniting in your hands? I forgot. Can you remind me, how does one move atop of you if not fiercely? When I finish retching up all the lilacs I have inside, what happens? Will you let someone else dip their hands in you after this? Will you? Will you? Would you rather drown or slowly burn to death? Did you know that the two are more or less the same? The other day, my mom pointed out that I'm getting bonier. Did I tell you? Why do you think I burn in the same shade as forget-me-nots? All right. Um, next, I'll read a piece called The Finger That Aches. Uh, this is basically just a series of a lot of haikus that I wrote about fingers and pain. <laughs> and uh, the finger that aches is sort of like a Korean idiom or like a well-known phrase. And it's a phrase that's often used to uh, describe this particular kind of heartache and um, a sort of very sad particular sympathy and kind of regret-filled love that you have for someone that 
you feel like you could have loved better that you did than you did, but you didn't. So this is the finger that aches. When experiencing stomach pains, prick your finger with a needle. Eyes half closed, I wait to feel every joint of your finger on my tongue. I wonder why they didn't nail Jesus's fingers. That would hurt one. When leaving fingerprints on glass, always remember to wipe it clean. Pinky promise, he said. Before the Christmas, he stopped visiting home. Boy stapled his finger like he was trying to prove painlessness. Might as well point at the dirt under my fingers and call it home. When leaving fingerprints on men, consider them dirtied forever. Okay. I'll read. Uh, then, uh, to end on like a more positive note, I'll read this one called Epilogue. This is the poem that uh, closes out the issues. Epilogue. This is how our private gospel begins, with my eyes eclipsing. You dexterous and latching my throat gate with one hand, your mouth parsing every orifice I once called my own. Our bodies spread thin on the bed, curdling down onto the floor. I scream tangible screams and ungirl so masterfully in your hands. To be honest, I used to understand sex as arithmetic. Faked orgasms to adhere to the zero sum rule of pleasure. Now, when you take control, you seal my lips like a borrowing. With my hands gone, we tangle bi-directionally, reminding each other with every kiss, I exist, I exist, I exist. You hurt me, and the hurt undoes itself in 30 seconds. You hurt me, and it feels good, and I sit in it for a while. When we finish, you kiss everything, including my eyeballs. When I forget how to breathe, you reteach it to me. Thanks so much. Yeah, that that was the end of what I was planning to read. So yeah, Nat. Awesome, thank you. Um, sweet, yeah. Um, so sort of what we're gonna kind of do because we've got an open mic component to this, and I don't know if anyone's planning on popping in and reading. I don't know if Aura's planning on reading, maybe. But uh, um, so basically, we'll have uh, Rachel read for just a bit um, from Trick Mirror and the other things that they've selected to read. Um, open it up to open mic for a little bit, and then we'll close out uh, with just one poem from Trick Mirror from Rachel. So I'll hand it over to y'all with that in mind. Hello. So I wanted to start off. Oh, good. She came back. So my cat Peanut is in the room with me, and I'm dedicating this one to her. I recently wrote a poem about her, and um, this is a very natural offshoot from Trick Mirror, I swear, promise. Um, and I plan on writing a micro trap or trap or however it shakes out, just about Peanut. Because originally I was going to write an entire cat chat book based off of all the cats I've had or interacted with, but it was getting a little too convoluted, and um, I think shortening it and the focus to Peanut is what is going to make it work better. So hopefully. Anyway, um, so I'm going to read 
when Peanut the Cat auditions as Courage from Courage the Cowardly Dog. And I do want to issue just a brief content warning. Um, well, one, I will say this poem is overall pretty sad, so I'm just going to leave that out there. And then two, there's a very vague reference to um, suggested sexual abuse. Um, so anyway, when Peanut the Cat auditions as Courage from Courage to the Cowardly Dog. Peanut is storm cloud blue. A deep mist invades the topography of nowhere Kansas, which is a gross inversion of the skin orange sand. Slicked back even bluer from freakish rain, yet she's still infested with gray, a sad clown eyes gray. You find her in a box of twilight burnt hay, the coarse strands trembling with her small body. Runts of the litter are always left for dead and no one wanted her. You lend your love so soon to her, and she trumpets and trumpets in return. Her mildew-crusted paws reach out to you, staining your cheek gray. You tell her it's okay now. She has a home here, nowhere. She sleeps by your feet that night. You dream yourself in a woozy room filled with twilight, specks of light reeling slow and strange, fizzing out then loud, loud then fizzing out until he appears. His hands reach toward you, the lights manipulated by his fingers. They pulse rippled flesh red, moon gaunt and grim, until these colors push into you. You keep tossing and turning at no fault of Peanut. She sees you, really sees you, and trumpets you awake. So that's my peanut poem and the little jerk walked out of the room when I was halfway through reading it. So feel the love, feel the love. Um, <laughs> but anyway, I'm going to move on to trick mirror or your computer screen, um, which is the main point of today. And um, I'm going to start off by reading one that I haven't read yet before for these events. And this one came out in Warning Lines third issue as well. So um, I'm gonna go for it. Uh, I will uh, these preface though before I read it. It's in the conceit of like a MySpace bulletin. So keep that in mind. It's a little hard to convey over reading, but um, I will do my best. And sorry, I've been having asthma issues, so I'm a little out of breath. I do apologize anyway. The uh, main content warning for this poem is just the mentionings of blood, body horror, general concept of those things. And um, the title of the poem is also the subject of the bulletin, which is this bulletin is cursed, but you can only send it to yourself. And then under content, there is under the fermenting sun, bright and serrated, rabid with brass blood, your skin loosened frothing and bruised, a soft sloughing, where you steeped in poached sunsets, steaming marigold and hungry, weaving sweat with scarecrow weather, dead in summer, savoring your body on fire. These realms effaced by the slaughtering heat, blazing through your teeth, you seethed in grief when dark snapped into reach. And under the comment section, um, disabled comments is selected. I swear it makes sense <laughs> looking at it more so than me reading it aloud. But it makes the I most wanna... sense. It's very beautiful in the book. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, um, it's hard to read some of these because they're uh, dependent on the visual elements or the conceits of them. Um, but that one was one of them. And then I'm going to read another one from the first section, which I never specified. I'm reading from the first section, which is called Virtual Wild West. And um, let's see, which one do, do I want to do next? I didn't plan this out, so we are winging it today, um, as we do. And I'm going to go ahead and read another one that is that has a form, but it's a little bit looser, so I don't think it's as dependent. It's titled What's Hot on MySpace Music. And um, real quick, the content warnings for these are cyberbullying and death threats. The death threats is mentioned, so um, it's not detailed. 
Anyway, again, the title is What's Hot on MySpace Music. Hot. Hoarding young thrushes, bland and blonde, in bad songs for your bad band, lines stolen from Avril Lavigne's girlfriend. Did you forget it was your karaoke special when you were nine and no one would listen and you sweat from daydreams where you identified as answers from an online quiz about what kind of lover he was, about how soft his touch, about how soft his touch felt, shoved in a closet, always a closet, for 10 minutes in heaven, if it meant the gossip would be true. Rock, they didn't know you when they wrote a sticky drama page about you your voice young and impressionable, rung German in the worst American accent. You sang Tokyo Hotel songs unabashedly, a new identity again and again and again. The saddest lyrics clung to you and they knew, spamming your Ask FM with vague warnings, shaking you with shame until you were famous for most death threats collected in seventh grade alternative when the scene kids poached outlet malls dressed like brats dolls with almond cat girl eyes malted skin they teased their hair in bathroom stalls where you shook a magic eight ball and asked if you were like them the answer stuck in grim blue no matter how many times it loosened but you knew you weren't with a cowlick of burnt straight off-brand paramour orange fringe in the way their glares were curses when you walked in musky hot topic it's shifting shadows sifting through you and uh, I'm going to go ahead and just read one more from this section and uh, let's see I am going to read um, What Kind of Vampire Are You, which originally came out in, in Wrongdoing Magazine, um, their first issue, Spring 2021. And just double check in here for the content warnings. For this one, there is references to suggested sexual situations. So I um, just want to put that out there. And again, the title is What Kind of Vampire Are You? Who were you in a past life? You burned your clothes stitched with air apostle, rich in lava lamp glow. The fire flickered through these memories quicker than images of naked old men on chat roulette, gazing at your moon-laden skin, crawling with apparitions, an online sadness you costumed through singe red hair extensions. How are you determined? You wanted it to happen. The way you softened in his husky hands, the way you touched in youth group when you were hiding in a holy room swollen by night, basting your body with cloying shadows. You softened again when you wanted him to consume you, when your skin crawled to jaundice and gothic, when you knew he'd haunt you in absentia. How do you kill? You asked him to walk you home in the morning, flirred by birds and chrome clouds shape-shifting to omens. You thought you were so cool. He said he would leave his girlfriend. He never did. And that night he texted you, kissed me in the crypts, tempted to delete it from your Nokia phone. You're too young when he asked to really see you, his body seared in the next text, grainy and gray, like a graveyard when it rained. And then that real quick, how good are we on time? Because I have a poem I really want to read from the next section, but it's the longer one. Honestly, so. we're more than okay. I had kind of allotted it until four. And okay. I mean, we're going to move into open mic, but right now I don't know how many people we're going to have. I did just like kind of resend the Discord link on Twitter. Like, hey, we're about to open this mic up, but just in case. <laughs> Sounds good. Um, okay, because I wanted to read about two or three from the next section. Do you think that there'd be enough time to read those 
you before open mic or yeah i think so i can't i feel like there's nothing in that section that's long enough that would really be like a huge problem so yeah okay sounds good all right and then i'm gonna read three from the second section which is titled past romance slash ontology and the first one i'm gonna read is um hauntology as a voicemail um i don't yep sorry i was just double checking yeah i don't believe that there's any content warnings for this one but most of them do have content warnings uh just a fyi if you're getting the book of most of the poems do have them um but i don't think any of them are like super super intense except for maybe a few poems here but anyway i'm gonna read hauntology as a voicemail your car carves into another summer dusk where heat oozes like an ulcer. The road ahead swells to vertigo. We need to talk, Elle. The setting sun bleeds red ripples and clean light. You pull the visor down, but you sit so close to the wheel that it doesn't make a difference. You're still sunsick. You can't think. You flick on the hazards. Soft yellow headlights waiting in the sunken highway about us you know i've been in my own head for a while the voicemail plays as drew's words sear into you you're burning in the skin and you peel your lips and know he won't ever kiss you like that night now stains the acid orange sun it fevers you all the same steam streams from the road and fogs up the windshield wondering why i haven't felt why I feel so dulled. Static fills between each fragment. Everything you see and hear is gray and alien. Dark drowns the only visible parts of the highway to a smooth, impenetrable mass. You swallow hard until a lump forms in the back of your throat. You don't deserve it. Me, like this. And I hope this isn't sudden. I'm sorry. You pass another exit, driving as the hours blear to a filthy pale dawn. The dry and sandy sun scratches you, and that's all you choose to feel as the voicemail plays again and again. All right, and then the next poem I want to read actually comes right after that. I also forgot to mention that Hauntology is a voicemail originally came out with uh, the Aurora Journal first, and then the next poem I'm going to read is Hauntology is My Scene Room Makeover, which first came out with, um, with confetti. One, you customize electronic rooms in shades. Her raspberry lips pink and soft from a smacker's gloss that she trades for a stick of your milk pale pink bubble gum. Your hands touch pink and smooth palms sweating pure sugar and warmth, skin sweetened by each other, until noon glazes and reeks with rotting peaches in the windowsill. Two, she talks to you in her sleep. Get out of the water. She pushes the blue sheets toward you in static splashes, the box fan dripping cold and clammy. You play mermaids in summer blow-up pools, and she lets out a piercing cry as a summoning until you are surrounded by acid blue chlorine, possessing the bodies of water you spit out and drink and spit out and drink until it burns, a current passing through your skin, and you know you'll drown if it means something to her as her hands push you away. Three, in the following years, Pillbug concrete fills her room. Leftover plushies you won for her at the fame school fair turn to stone or taxidermy. She kills those, squeezing their throats until they explode with cotton and pink thread and teenage tears. And after it's done, she clings to her carnage saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. But their plush bodies are scattered on her bed. She sutures soft sinew by sinew, Frankensteining them together just to hide it in her closet until she leaves for college and consciously decides to forget your name. And you drive past after your last breakup, 
the bulldozed room repurposed as a graveyard shaded with reclaimed green and skies nodding to night. And then the last poem I'll read before we break into the, um, the open mic section is a bit of a doozy. This one is Hauntology is a two-step wiki how for goth girls and it placed in Gut Slut's Roar XD contest. Um, and then this one has a few different content warnings. So let me just go ahead and um, pull through those. So it references medical trauma, bullying, self-harm, and vomit just as a quick FYI, and then go ahead and get into it. Also, if you hear my cat, she's currently screaming for some reason. <laughs> so, hi, Peanut. Okay. Hauntology is a two-step wiki how for goth girls. Here you are in a new room with a graveyard view, puking womb plus yellow. What do you do when sickness shapeshifts your body to a tomb? Too many years wasted lying on church cold floor, bad lighting and bile shimmering on blue tiles, sterilized by youth, shit faced by truth. And what do you do when everyone at school claims you were just a goth girl? But this is 2009, we call this emo, which is less cool. And when you're back, they laugh and laugh until it becomes you. Then what do you do? Step one reimagine camp as your origin story or Degrassi's Shark in the Water promo. You pass red flags, a path to a carnival, as the cotton-spun sky sugars your skin, cloying pink for them. Was this a holy blessing? You pray you taste good and pay the entry fee with your secrets. Yes, even the ones they force you to swallow, the ones shaped like medicine cherry hard candies, until your whole body is sickeningly sweet and quick to rot. But you tell them your lips taste of salt, and that's why you hurt so fucking much. You can't stop licking your razor wrists. Hey, they painted you with the razor when you had a broken CD case, and those markings were identical to dog scratches. But that isn't drama enough, tears and teen glory enough, and you feared what they could do if you coughed up truths. Why not let, why not let them have the you projected by trick mirrors, the other who ripped through your ribs more than once, is it easier to breathe now? Step two, reinvent your look through your search history. Gnashing teeth at night, is it ghosts? Feel like floating in sleep. Gash skin reeks like old pennies. Ellie Nash or Haley Williams. How orange can hair be dyed? Does body central sell fishnets? Can people on Omegle tell how old you are? What if who you met online is a famous emo? Will that make you popular then? Warnings. You'll grow an unhealthy obsession with Twilight where you'll ask Wolf Girl to write self-inserted fan fiction together where you're Bella and she's Jacob and you'll secretly fall in love with how husky her voice sounds when she calls you late in the night, fighting over boys to throw off your scent. But is it a secret when you tell everyone at church camp the sick yellow dusk fermenting in your throat when you hard swallow? So um, that is the second section of Trick Mirror, just uh, those three poems, and I will leave it there for the open mic. Sweet. Um, anyone who wants to read anything is welcome to pop in. I think Aura might just be lurking, so in that case... Um... <laughs> Rachel, you can uh, just take us home. <laughs> unless you unless you were like done done. Sorry, I was just responding in chat. Yeah, oh, I can read. Oh, you're fine, yeah. I was actually thinking of reading one poem from a new project and then ending us out with one more trick mirror poem. Um so I actually need to grab my binder for this because I am the worst kind of person and did not even think about possibly wanting to read from this collection but I am working on a horror book it's a work in progress <laughs> but um I have about 40 pages in it so far and the one I want to read 
is really reminiscent of Trek Mirror, so I'm just going to go ahead and read that one. Currently unfilmed, except for in my binder. <laughs> so, um, go ahead for that one. Sorry, I would have given you verbal approval, but there was a siren outside. <laughs> oh, no, you're totally good. Okay, so this one has content warnings for um, uh, period blood and then um, suggested sexual abuse. And just it's, it's a little bit more. It's more like sexual abuse, actually. So I'll just go for that uh, real quick. But anyway... It's titled, When You Chat on Omegle with a Conversation Partner or a Firewall. So, it's in the um, text form of Omegle Chats, which is a very lawless place, even now, because it's just, it's a mess. <laughs> and um, every line, there's, there's multiple lines here. It's hard to read, because I don't want to, like, read every time Stranger Says This or Stranger Says That, because it's every single line. So pretty much the stranger just talks throughout the other person or the you person does not speak at all. So at the top, it's talk to strangers. You're now chatting with a random stranger. Say hi. You both like Am I Gay Quizzes and St. Maud 2019. Stranger. Those results are pure acetone to pour directly onto your eyes, your fuchsia stained eyes. The results always burn a little longer and you apply the pain like polish because she peers into you. Your body fire dissolves and warm with sick or warm with wanting, asking about your latest horse phase by pointing to your horse necklace that doubles as a mood reader, the color always black. <clears throat> she asks how you are, your screen blinking you to dissociation, where you slip into the day you wished for it. Another girl bought it for you at the book fair Singed by the smell of rotten flora, musty like your youth-stained period blood, she fingered out of you, and you're popped out of choice for desire. She bought you that necklace and black beauty and forced you to touch yourself when you used them, and she touched herself and leaned in to spit on your horse necklace and rubbed it clean of demons, since possession is contagious, and she sickens the promise of Jesus. The horse in doom black flamed a plagued by her and she begged you to pray with the tease of her tongue maybe you were afraid maybe you were wet with wanting because soon you'd need to melt yourself into a fuchsia scorched flush puddle and it glitters in the sunlight or the eye of fire like the feeling of a fresh cut on your virgin wrists and you'll be afraid that she'd swallow you clean <clears throat> your conversation partner has disconnected Start a new conversation or save this log or send this feedback. <laughs> Sorry, I am struggling a little bit. <clears throat> but anyway, so that is from my new collection. The last section is very <laughs> like that, but <clears throat> the other sections are a bit softer. Um, and then I will go ahead and take us home with a trick mirror poem. But I kind of wanted to leave this one open to choice so i was thinking about reading the very first poem or the very last poem Ooh, i'm so torn on that because they're both so good but i kind of have a soft spot for the very first one yeah that one is definitely the whole start of the whole thing i'll go ahead and read that one because i think that one's easier to read too word um so this one was originally published by um, Pink Plastic House in the, in the summer. It's titled Playing with Polly Pockets or a Poltergeist, and it references childhood abuse and sexual abuse. Playing with Polly Pockets or Poltergeists. One, Beach House Compact. You crammed yourself in a Polly Pockets clamshell. It smelled like peach bellini and breezy beach steeping in rose glow grief. Here you lived in a hammock with no pangs of feeling, no memories when your eyes were gummy from tears. Clamp skin when he fished your voice from body just to speak through others like Beetlejuice. He trapped you here, <clears throat> rattling youth with death until you were somewhere in between. Two, 
Lunar Eclipse movie. Hologram clothes and pink limos Holly could choose. The brick red moon glowed apricot yellow, yoke on road, an eclipse. On the way home, hella good from another realm reeled through neon dark. <clears throat> the shadows peeling you back to when a friend played a game you didn't choose. Saying, hey baby, hands all over your underdeveloped body. They moved like a carousel, making you ride in double exposed light after you thrown clothes projected by poltergeists formed like holograms. Sorry, the ending's a little rough. I'm kind of like having a bit of an asthma attack and um, it's not letting up. Oh my God, but- Rachel, I felt I feel so bad. I like almost offered to like hop in in between your two poems so you could like take a break and like breathe and drink some water. I'm so no, sorry. It's okay. It's okay. I shouldn't be getting asthma attacks for just talking, so I need to, like, figure that out. <laughs> but anyway, um, so Trick Mirror or your computer screen comes out tomorrow, and um, all those poems are in that, except for the two I read, the Omegle poem and <clears throat> the Peanut poem. Those are in two projects I'm working on, and uh, yeah, I will let it go to Matt now. Thank you all. Awesome. Yeah. Um, thank you to everybody who came out. We're really, really excited to get Rachel's book out into the world tomorrow. Um, and we are just as excited to get this process rolling with our June authors and kind of bring this to y'all again in a couple of months. Um, so thanks to everybody who came out. Appreciate it.